Let's define the rotation operators. We're going to do that by taking the complex exponentials of the Pauli matrices. Let's begin by taking the complex exponential of the Pauli X matrix. So I'm going to define R sub X as a function of the angle theta as being equal to the exponential of minus I theta on two, and then we have the Pauli X matrix or the Pauli X operator. So what is going on in this definition? Here we have a complex exponential because of this factor of I. We have by convention a minus sign, and also by convention, we're putting a factor of one half in front of this angle theta. The reason that one half is there is because it allows us to have a very convenient definition for the range of the angle of theta. Because in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, we're going to be using these definitions to describe rotations on the block sphere. And the block sphere is a fantastic visualization for the state of a qubit. And it's also going to allow us to visualize the action of the Pauli matrices and the Hadamard gate, as well as many other single qubit gates. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to define this in terms of its Taylor series. So that is an infinite sum. We're going to have a sum that goes from, we're going to set an index going K going from zero to infinity. And what are the terms in this infinite series? We're going to have to take what is in the exponent, which is minus I theta on two, and we have Pauli X. We're raising that to the power of K, and we're going to divide by K factorial. This is the exponential function by definition. So anytime you want to take the exponential of a matrix or an operator, you can just define it using this Taylor series. So it is an infinite sum. So what you have to do is you just have to take uh, powers of these matrices with some coefficients out the front and then add them together. And that can give you an approximation up to a certain uh, order. And you can truncate the series uh, depending on how much precision you would like. So let's actually evaluate some of the terms in this infinite sum. Let's start off with the k equals zero term. So down here, we're going to have zero factorial, which is equal to one. And then here, we're going to have k equal to the power of zero. So we're raising this operator to the power of zero. What does that actually mean? It means we're not applying the operator at all. That's the same as applying the identity operator. So the term that corresponds to k equals zero is the identity operator. Next, the next term is going to be k equals 1. So we're going to have 1 factorial, which is 1, and we're going to have k equal to 1 up here in the exponent. So we're just going to take what is in the exponent and write that down. That's going to be our next term. So we have minus i theta on 2x. At this point, we actually have a decent approximation for small angles of theta. So if theta in this definition is a very small angle, then we only need these terms to give a decent approximation. The condition that we need to satisfy is that the square of this angle needs to be negligible. So theta needs to be really small, and theta squared will be a small number squared, which is very small, and it's not going to contribute very much to this approximation. But we don't want an approximation that only works for small angles of theta. We want something that works for arbitrary values of theta for full revolutions around. So all, many values of theta can, can be substituted in here. So what do we need? We need higher order terms. So let's have a look at the k equals 2 term. So what we need to do is square this. Or equivalently, we need to apply this operator twice. We're going to have uh, 2 factorial down here. So I'll write that. We're also going to have minus 1, because minus i squared is minus 1. So we're going to have 1. So we have minus 1 on 2 factorial. And then theta on 2 raised to the power of 2. And then we're going to have x squared. But x squared is the identity. And it's important to note what this Pauli x operator actually is. The Pauli x operator, when it acts on a qubit state, is a bit flip. And if you have two bit flips applied to a qubit state, you're actually going to be uh, doing the identity. You're not going to be doing anything to the state. Because the second bit flip will undo the action of the first bit flip. In other words, x is its own inverse. 
So it is unitary and it is Hermitian. Those are some essential properties of the Pauli matrices. So anytime we want to square the Pauli matrices, uh, we will get the identity. So this is the k equals 2 term. Now let's have a look at the k equals 3 term. We have to raise this to the power of 3. So we're going to have minus i cubed. That's going to give us plus i. So we'll have plus i on 3 factorial. Then we're going to have theta on 2 to the power of 3. And we have an odd power of Pauli x, which is actually going to give us x. Because when you have x cubed, that's the same as x squared times another factor of x. So x squared is the identity, and then you're just left with x. Now, let's have a look at k equals 4. That is going to give us uh, plus 1. So we're going to have plus 1, and we're going to have 4 factorial, theta on 2 raised to the power of 4. And this is an even power. It's going to be the same as x squared times x squared, which is the identity squared, and that's the same as the identity. And this is our k equals 4 term. And we'll do one more term. And one more term is k uh, to the power, so k equals 5. And we're going to be raising this to the power of 5. We're going to have 5 factorial here, and we're going to have minus i appearing here. So we'll have minus i on 5 factorial, theta on 2 raised to the power of 5. And because this is an odd power, we have Pauli x here. And then there's going to be higher order corrections, or higher order terms, and you can add as many as you would like, and then you can truncate the series uh, for whatever order approximation you're looking at. So let's have a look at some cyclic patterns that are occurring uh, in these terms. We can see that they alternate between i, x, i, x, i, x. For all of the even values of k, so all of the even powers of this operator, we get the identity operator. And for all of the odd powers, or all the odd values of k, we get x. That's because odd powers can be grouped as uh, even powers plus an extra factor of x. So all of those even powers are going to give the identity, and then we're just left with an extra x, and that's what explains these x's over here. So that is one cyclic pattern between this alternation between i and x. There is another cyclic pattern that occurs with the powers of minus i. So we start off with plus 1, then we go to minus i, then minus 1, then plus i, and then we're back to plus 1. And then we, we alternate around and we go back to minus i. This actually comes from the unit circle. So if you look at the unit circle in the complex plane, you can imagine four points on that uh, unit circle. So on the right-hand side, we would have plus 1. That would correspond to raising minus i to the power of 0. Then if you raise by uh, raise something to the power of 1, that's the same as multiplying it once. So minus i corresponds to a quarter cycle rotation in this direction. So we have minus i, then we have minus 1, then we have plus i, and then we're back to 1. And you can see how it is cyclical because we're going around the circle. And every time we multiply by an extra factor of minus i, we uh, go a quarter way around the circle. And we're going in the opposite direction around the circle than if we would be multiplying by plus i. So that is what this actually means on the unit circle. And there are other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist that go into details. So now what I want to do is group together the terms that multiply the identity operator and the terms that multiply the Pauli x operator. Let's do that underneath here. So first, what we're going to have is these terms, the even powers. So we're going to have 1 minus this term over here. We're going to have 1 on 2 factorial, theta on 2 squared. And then we're going to have plus 1 on 4 factorial, theta on 2 raised to the power of 4. And then we'll have higher order terms. And this is all multiplying the Pauli i operator. Then the next thing I want to do is factor out minus i. So you can see that all of these terms, I don't need to factor out anything, but for these terms, I'm going to factor out a minus i. And then I will group together everything that we find. So over here, if I factor out minus i, I have theta on 2 by itself. Uh, then if I uh, look at this term over here, I will have minus 1 on 3 factorial theta on 2 raised to the power of 3. 
And finally, this term over here is going to be plus, because I factor out a minus i, 1 on 5 factorial. And then we're going to have theta on 2. And finally, we're going to raise that to the power of 5. And then we have higher order terms. So I will close this bracket over here. And I'll put a pally x. So let's examine what we've actually got over here. So all of these terms look suspiciously similar to the Taylor series of the cosine and the sine function. So this over here is equivalent to cosine of theta on 2 times the identity operator. And this over here is equivalent to minus i sine theta on 2 times pali x. So this is what we've got. This combination over here is equivalent to this Taylor series. And this combination over here is equivalent to this Taylor series. You can see all of the even powers are occurring over here, and they have alternating signs. And you can see all of the odd powers occurring here, and they also have alternating signs. So now what we want to do is take this and write a matrix representation for this. And I'm going to do that underneath. So this is equivalent to a matrix representation, which is going to look like this. The identity operator has diagonal entries. So we're going to have cosine of theta on 2 times the identity operator, which looks like this in its matrix representation. So this is the identity operator. It is diagonal. All the off uh, diagonal entries are 0. And then we have minus i sine theta on 2 times the pali x operator. And the pali x operator looks like this. We have 0, 1, 1, 0. So it's the opposite uh, uh, of the uh, opposite of this combination over here because we're swapping around the columns. And what we're going to find if, if we substitute all these values and turn this into one matrix, we're going to find that this is equal to cosine of theta on 2 on the diagonal. We're going to have another cosine of theta on 2 over here. And then on the off diagonals, we're going to have minus i sine theta on 2. So I'll put that over here, minus i sine theta on 2, and then minus i sine theta on 2. And I'll close this matrix. So this is the matrix that corresponds to this operator. And let's have a look at the overview of what we've done with this Pali x operator. We've taken the complex exponential. We have substituted that into uh, this Taylor series definition. We expanded that out, and we looked at terms. We grouped some terms together. We managed to smush these terms together and smush these terms together. And we saw that these are, by definition, the cosine and the sine of half of theta. And that allowed us to write this expression over here. And we took the matrix representations of the identity and the Pali x operator written in the Pali z eigenbasis. And then we added these matrices together, and that's given us this over here. Let's do the exact same thing, but instead of Pali x, let's use Pali y and Pali z. So let's see how that would work. So first of all, let's define r y of theta. So r y of theta is going to look like this. We're going to have e to the minus i theta on 2 y. So it's analogous to this definition over here. Instead of x, we, we're just putting y. And all of this reasoning over here is going to be exactly the same, because we're also going to have this cyclic alternation between the identity and this Pauli matrix over here. But instead of x, we're going to have y appearing here. So y also satisfies that property. If you take the square of the Pauli y operator, you will get the identity. So we can actually fast forward. We can go straight to this final step over here and substitute y in place of x. So let's do that. That's going to give us cosine of theta on 2 times the identity. And then we're going to have minus i sine theta on 2 times pali y. And let's actually write this out in terms of matrices. So we'll do this over here. We can write this as matrices. We're going to have cosine of theta on 2 times this matrix, again, the identity matrix. 
And then we have minus i sine theta on 2 as pali y, and pali y looks like this. We have i and minus i on the off diagonal and zeros on the diagonal. So it's slightly different to what we have with pali x. Over here we just have 1s, but over here we have i and minus i. So what happens when we, when we actually multiply these guys and add the two matrices together? Well, we're going to get this resulting matrix. On the diagonal, we're going to have cosine of theta as well as what we had over here. So it's exactly the same on the diagonal. So we'll have cosine of theta on 2, and we'll also have cosine of theta on 2 over here. But the off-diagonal entries are going to be slightly different. Now, we have a minus i over here, and then we have a plus i and a minus i over here. This minus i and i are going to evaluate to give plus 1, and over here we're going to have minus i times minus i, and that's going to give minus 1. So we're going to have plus and minus over here. So here we're going to have sine of theta on 2, and here we're going to have minus sine of theta on 2. And I'll close this matrix. So you can see it looks very similar. Now the last uh, operator we're going to define in this video is the rotation with respect to z. So we're going to have r sub z as a function of theta. And that is equivalent to the exponential e to the minus i theta on 2 as a pali z operator. And we can just swap this y for a z. All the same reasoning applies because z squared is equal to the identity. So this is equal to cosine of theta on 2 times the identity. And we have minus i sine theta on 2 times pali z. So let's write these matrix representations out underneath. That's going to give us cosine of theta on 2 times this identity matrix again. And then over here, we're going to have minus i sine of theta on 2 times pali z. And pali z is also diagonal. So we have minus 1 over here in place of plus 1. So that's the only difference between the identity and pali z. The zeros on the off diagonal, 1 and minus 1 on the diagonal. Now, let's write this as a single matrix. What are we going to see? Well, this actually uh, we can be collapsed into complex exponentials on the diagonal. Let's see how that works. If you look at the off-diagonal entries, we have zeros over here and zeros over here. So there's not going to be any off-diagonal components in this matrix. We're only going to have diagonal components. For this top left component, we're going to have cosine of theta on 2 minus i sine of theta on 2. And that can be written as a complex exponential. And what about this other term over here? Instead of plus, uh, instead of this plus 1 here, we're going to have minus 1, and that minus is going to cancel with this minus over here. So we're going to have the opposite sign in the complex ex exponential. So I'll write that over here. What we're going to have is e to the minus i theta on 2, and e to the plus i theta on 2. And on the off-diagonal entries, we have zeros. So this comes from Euler's formula. If you take cosine plus i sine, that gives you this exponential. And if there is a minus sign, you have a minus sign appearing up here. And if there's a plus sign, you have a plus sign appearing up here. So the sign of this uh, exponential term is determined by the sign of this coefficient of the sine function. And by sine, I mean the sinusoidal function, not sine S-I-G-N. So now what we've done is we've defined all three of these rotation operators. And we're going to be using these operators in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can see some similarities between the matrix representations of x and y. The only difference is these coefficients of the off diagonal terms. But then we see something very different occurring for pali z because we can group the cosines and sines together using Euler's formula into these complex exponentials. So make sure you watch the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist where you'll see how these operators are actually used and how they can be used to create visualizations on the block sphere. You can find all those other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.